Hi, my name is Mike Fegis, and I'm the coach of the Hudson Middle School Power of the Pen team. Welcome to the 2020 Power of the Pen State Awards. The state tournament couldn't be held this year due to the pandemic, but a number of writers did amazing work worthy of recognition at the state level in several different categories. We begin today with the presentation of the regional Best of the Best Awards. These were selected from all of the regional Best of Round pieces. My name is Debbie Frost and I'm a gifted intervention specialist at Monticello Middle School in the Cleveland Heights University High School District. I've had the honor of coaching a Power of the Pen team for the last 20 years at my school and the pleasure of being a host school coordinator for the district Power of the Pen tournament for the last 18 years. Indeed, it's been an experience and a wonderful opportunity to be a part of this unique writing program. The Power of the Pen program provides and nurtures the creative writing skills. From its conception, it has provided a platform for writers to examine and to go deep into the imagination of storytelling. Stories that are full of trauma, full of excitement, imagination, uh, fantasy, and developing stories and characters that create the epitome of great writing. This year's Regional Power of the Pen Tournament was held online, and each uh, regional tournament, students who earned the highest ranking points were received the best around honors. Their work went on to be evaluated with other regional best around writers throughout Ohio. The best of best award winners presented here represents the most powerful young writers and voices that have merged from the entire season of Power of the Pen. Their stories that pick a variety of, of characters and perspectives, but they all share the ability to connect with the readers. Students who receive this honor are eligible to publish to be published in a book of winners. They will receive a certificate and information on how to submit their photos to the book of winners at a later date. We thank you all for your participation and support of the 2020 Regional Power of the Pen season. And thank you for your participation.
thanks to Debbie Frost for her contribution to this awards presentation. Our next category is the Powerful Pen Award. I'm Barb Shantz, Executive Director of Power the Pen, and it's my privilege today to announce the winners of the Powerful Pen Award. The Powerful Pen Award recognizes writing that has a compelling voice with the power to evoke strong emotions. Powerful Pen Award winners have had multiple stories published in the Book of Winners. No matter the prompt, they have demonstrated the ability to touch universal themes through stories that we can all relate to. Our first Powerful Pen Award winner is Annie Johnson, who was at John Sells Middle School in Dublin, Ohio when she wrote her stories. Last year, when she was in eighth grade, she placed in the top 15 in the state tournament. She writes on a wide range of subjects, including dealing with the aftermath of abuse and also having to tell a grandmother about a supposedly forbidden relationship. In her story, Changes, the narrator comes to realize why she has crumpled up her younger sister's fifth grade graduation speech. Pretty soon, she would be 11. Pretty soon, she would be too big to be tucked in. Pretty soon, she would start shopping for herself. Pretty soon, she would stop liking barbecue potato chips and braiding hair. Pretty soon, she would get up on that stage and deliver a speech all by herself without needing me to hold her hand. Pretty soon, she'd be in middle school where girls gawk and gossip and plot to destroy each other from within. Middle school where girls like Lainey go to die and be reborn into girls who care about what other girls think. Pretty soon, she wouldn't need me at all. I couldn't take it. Thank you, Annie, for your insightful and heartfelt writing. Our second Powerful Pen Award winner was in eighth grade at Chagrin Falls Middle School when she wrote her stories. Marie Kanzinger, who's now a freshman in high school, placed first last year in the eighth grade at the state tournament. She also writes on a wide range of topics, including what it's like to suffer the loss of a child and how to comfort someone at their hospital bed. Her story, Mother and Daughter, describes a young girl whose mother is gone. She copes with the loss by rereading a library book that helps her realize what it might have been like to grow up with a mom. One day, she's dismayed to discover that another little girl has checked out the book and the librarian comforts her. You know the librarian begins, a young girl very much like you came for the book. Very much like you, she repeats as she slowly edges away, looking me directly in the eyes. All books need to be shared, Myra, some more than others. And with a smile, she walks away. I'm left on the floor, staring at the ceiling fan, whirring gently. I picture a girl not much younger than I am, her recently washed out eyes finding the book. The pages rich between her fingertips as she recounts days when her mother was by her side. Maybe, maybe I could wait. For two weeks or two months, however long it takes to heal. Marie really understands the power of storytelling to change people's hearts and help them heal. Thank you, Annie and Marie, for sharing your stories with us. And congratulations on your wonderful Power of the Pen season. We wish you all the best in the future. We thank Barb Schatz for her video today. Our next category is the Humor Award. Hi everybody, my name is Sage Boggs. Hi, my name is... And I'm very honored to be announcing the Humor Award for Power of the Pen. Before I get to the winner though, I'd like to give a little bit of background about myself. I am from South Vienna, Ohio, which is a small village. We have a corn festival every September, so check it out sometime. I competed on my Power of the Pen team in seventh and eighth grade back in I think 2004 and 2005. Back then it was a lot different. We had a different Pope, we had a different set of Star Wars movies, and if I'm not mistaken, none of you were born yet? And let me tell you, that is deeply upsetting. I went to The Ohio State University where I studied English, so, you know, me talk words real good now because me study hard so much in college. My senior year of college, I moved to New York. I, I worked for David Letterman and Jimmy Fallon, and then I ended up writing for The Tonight Show with Jimmy for about three years. I still write for TV, but now from home here in Brooklyn, and I think that's everything about me. Okay, so onto the award. Okay, before I announce the winner, I should say, all of the stories I read were fantastic. I'm not kidding, they were way better than what I wrote in middle school. If I had to compete against you all as middle school me, I would have lost 
severely. So kudos to everyone for being great. I finally came to a decision, so drum roll, please. This year's Humor Award goes to Sunhe Smith from St. Bernadette's School in Westlake, Ohio. I looked up Westlake on a map because I wasn't sure where it was, and if you walked from Westlake to South Vienna, where I'm from, it would only take 51 hours. So, not bad. Sunhe, I'll see you at the Corn Festival. Sunhe's story was called Colors in Trouble, and it was about a box of crayons that fell to the ground, um, and every crayon had its own distinct personality. The yellow crayon was very bright and optimistic, the blue crayon was constantly sad, and the green crayon was a total moron. <laughs> it was such a moron, it ate crayons. I thought it was very fun, very imaginative, and I'm a sucker for anthropomorphism, which is a fancy word I learned when I learned English good at college. So congrats, Sunhee. And congrats to everyone, genuinely. Power of the Pen is such a unique organization. My best advice for writers is to write. That's the only way you get better at writing is keep writing. There are a million ways to write, and it doesn't need to be perfect. Keep a journal, write a poem, um, do anything to keep the juices flowing. Just remember, you're so young. You're so upsettingly young. Deeply upsetting. Stay safe out there. Congrats. Thanks to Sage Boggs for his participation in our ceremony. Our next award category is the Promising Young Talent Award. This award is presented by a state tournament guest who read the work of writers from the previous season and chose the one who has the most promise as a young novelist. This year's presenter is Margaret Peterson Haddix. She's the author of more than 40 books for teens. She wrote the Greystone Secret series, the Shadow Children series, and the Missing series. She grew up on a farm near Washington Court, Ohio. She graduated from Miami of Ohio with degrees in English journalism, English creative writing, and history. Her books have won numerous awards and have achieved New York Times bestseller status. She lives with her husband, Doug, in Columbus, Ohio. Hello! I'm Margaret Peterson Haddix, and I was very honored to be asked to judge the Promising Young Talent Award for the State Power of the Pen competition. You guys did not make it an easy decision for me because there were a lot of really good pieces that I was able to read. And as always, when I encounter Power of the Pen writing, I'm just in awe of what you all were able to accomplish. But I was able to choose a winner, and I am very pleased to announce that the winning selection is by Paige Galperin from Kempton Middle School in Monroe Falls, Ohio. And her piece is called History Repeats Itself. And there were many things that were just wonderful about this piece. One of the things that she did very well was her pacing throughout and the progress and kind of a twist between how you view things at the beginning of the piece and how it turns out that things really are. I was also greatly appreciative of her humor and the way she ties in actual history and references to American history with her progress through an American history test. And throughout, she had any number of really great word choices. For example, a clock ticks with the ferocity of a power crazed snare drum player. Uh, her descriptions of her phone buzzing and becoming more and more insistent. Uh, I, I loved her expressions with that, including at one point it turns into a B on Red Bull. And her teacher at one point has his eyebrows raised to what the heck heights. So little touches like that throughout the piece were just excellent and the pacing overall was great and it was just a really great piece. So congratulations to Paige and congratulations to all of you. And I hope you will be writing a lot. A big thank you to Margaret Peterson Haddix for presenting today. Our next and final award is the Poetry Award. It started in 1991 and is usually open to all state qualifiers, but due to the circumstances of the pandemic, it was open to regional qualifiers this year. We received 125 entries. Our poetry judge is George Bilger, professor of English and creative writing at John Carroll University. Mr. Bilger has a number of poetry collections and has won numerous awards, including the Midland Authors Award and a Pushcart Prize. Hi, I'm George Bilger. And on behalf of the Power of the Pen, in 2020, I'd like to congratulate the winners of this year's Power of the Pen Poetry Contest. 
I judge this contest every year for at least a decade, and I always look forward to reading these poems. And I have to say, this year, it was really tough coming up with the winner. I don't know why we had such an exceptionally crop, good crop of terrific young poets this year, but I want you all to know, even those of you who didn't win, man, you guys are good, and it makes me very nervous to have you guys coming up, uh, trying to push me off the stage, because you're doing a pretty good job of it. Um, today I'm going to read to you uh, the, the two winners, but before I, e I, I read their poems, I want to mention a couple of honorable mentions uh, that I just thought were fabulous poems. The first one is a poem called Gold, and it's by Alison Krawicki. And what I loved about this poem was the fact that uh, Alison took as a, as a central metaphor for making yourself a better person. She took this wonderful Japanese art form which uh, in which if you drop a, a vase or a pot, you glue it together with gold. And so you see all the flaws as gold. And it was just a beautiful poem, Allison. So thank you very much for gold. Uh, another terrific runner-up was by Audra Lozina of Hudson Middle School in Hudson. And it was called The Sweet Stains of Youth. And this poem just evoked so beautifully what it's like to be a little kid in summer waiting for that ice cream to, truck to come. And she uses the metaphor, uh, the image of a melting ice cream cone, to stand for the various phases we all pass through as we go through life. So, thank you, Audra. That was a beautiful poem. Um, our second place, uh, winner is Zoe Stiefel from Shaker Heights Middle School, who wrote a poem. I've never read a poem on this subject, but I've thought about it all the time. You know how great it is when your parents buy some object that is so big it comes in a giant cardboard box, and you play with that box for days, it becomes a kind of magic, center of magic in the, uni in the universe for you. Um, Zoe wrote a beautiful poem about this called Cardboard Box, and I'm going to read it for you. Once it was mailed, now it rots in the rain, on the lonely store step, brittle, brown, and stained. Simple, dull, torn, not much to see, yet through the eyes of a child, there's much more it can be. Step inside, climb aboard, and your world will transform. From imagination and wonder, endless marvels are born. It might be a rocket that blasts to the stars to meet and greet aliens that reside on Mars. Or perhaps it's a time machine that takes you back through the past to when giant lizards roamed and ruled landscapes vast. Flip it upside and it's a cave to explore with mysteries deep, labyrinths, and more. Crawl inside with your toys for hours of play. Close it up in the dark and it's a great hideaway. Or grip the flaps tight. You're the king of the track, screeching around the corners. There's no speed you lack. Or maybe it's a pirate ship sailing open seas with the wind in your hair and a salty sea breeze. It can be a spaceship that's at your command. You're an astronaut captain on distant planets and you'll land. With belief, imagination, and creativity, it can be anything you want it to be. But to those careworn adults, slaves to their clocks, in their eyes, it is only a cardboard box. And what I love about this poem, and that ending is killer, because I'm afraid I'm becoming that adult. It's like, when did you stop being a poet? When did that happen? And you know what? It's never too late to get it back. Thank you for that poem, Zoe. That was beautiful. And our first place winner is Anna Blazinski of Dr. Henry Carrer Middle School in Dublin, Ohio. And before I tell you about the poem, I'll read it. Uh, but again, my cardboard box, as a grown-up, I know exactly what this poem is about and where it came from. And I think about this all the time. The poem is called Evolution of a Person Based on a Neighborhood Party. 
When you walk downstairs, you're hit by a ball. It's followed by shrieking from a horde of children with messy hair and clothes featuring cartoon characters. You're surprised that they barely come up to your waist. What's strange is that you can remember being one of them, hurling a red ball defiantly down the top of the staircase, demanding to join the boys. Now, with those same boys and girls, too, you try to chat among the wild Nerf Wars, but it's too loud to hear. So you all go upside, upstairs to a quieter room where you argue over what to watch, things ranging from thrillingly inappropriate comedies to silly kids' movies. No one listens to the TV. You laugh and gossip instead. What's strange is that someday you'll have done this for the last time, but for now you learn all about why they broke up. Soon that information won't matter anymore. You will arrive at the party with homemade caramel popcorn, the same hostess gift your mom used to bring, You'll find something to drink and join the adults, discussing jobs and the vacations that only a few will be lucky enough to take. It will be incredible how long you talk. What's strange is the fact that you'll only sort of realize that every adult upstairs sipping wine was once a kid playing spies in the basement. And man, I read that poem and I think of English department committee meetings and paying my income taxes and think how much I would love to go down those stairs into the basement and play spies again. Um, you're a wonderful group of poets. Thank you again for giving us these beautiful poems. Thank you writers, coaches, parents, and volunteers for your dedication to Power of the Pen, especially during the pandemic. Be sure to like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. Registration for the 2020-2021 season is slated to open on September 1st on powerofthepen.org. We hope you have a safe and fun summer, and we look forward to seeing you next season. <laughs>